And here we are. This is Earth. Whoa, one sec. Can we switch it to whiteboard? Those lines around it, that's our magnetic field. The field is caused deep in the Earth where convection currents move the iron, generating a current inducing a magnetic field. But this is much larger scale than we're dealing with. Let's go to our level. Some very clever physicist named Faraday spotted that current flowing in a wire induces a magnetic field and his mate Ampere did some maths and came up with some equations we'll be using today. We'll be using Helmholtz coils which generate a uniform magnetic field between them. Helmholtz coils are loops of wires that are spaced a radius apart. We used a magnetic meter, a magnometer, a mag... We used a pole to measure the change in magnetic field B. By changing the current that flows in the coils, we'll change the induced magnetic field. Magnetic field is proportional to current, so by plotting B against I and taking the gradient, we'll get a constant K that we'll be using shortly. So now we have K, now to calculate Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field of Earth is equal to the magnetic field in the coils over tan theta, where theta is the amount of compasses rotated by the coil's magnetic field. Now using our K from part one and rearranging, we can get that tan theta is proportional to I. Our gradient of this graph will give us K over Earth's magnetic field. So to get Earth's magnetic field, we need to do K over the gradient. Our recorded value of Earth's magnetic field is 10.8 plus or minus 0.4 microteslas. But wait, we measured our magnetic field here, causing it to be a tilt to Earth's actual magnetic field. So how do we solve that? We measured the tilt theta at 19 degrees plus or minus one degree. So to get the actual magnetic field of Earth, we need to divide our value by sine of the tilt. We got our value to be 33 plus or minus two microteslas. Real results from proper scientists range from 25 to 65 microteslas. We were content with our results. And so am I.